Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time, it's a power supply model 6226A. And it looks, I mean, look at it. it. Looks so much like an HP, but it's called Harrison Laboratories or H Lab. It is, of course, a company uh, working together with HP, and that is just why it's sold under their name, and it's also written in the manual. And all that is quite normal. I don't know anything about this one, if it's working or not. And it's, there's a little bit of interesting things about this design. There is a pre-regulator in this one, and I believe this is a on off or pulsed uh, sort of a switch mode sort of pre-regulator and then there is a, of course a linear regulator and that is why this model this is the a model there is not a fan in this one the b model there is a fan inside i'm also very lucky that i got the original power supply cable because that one is uh, oops sorry about that is this annoying type you really have a hard time getting and again here at the back the name and logo and all that kind of stuff this is a little bit of air ventilation and they even say this can be hot you got some different uh, fuses and remote control and remote input output here at the back but let's open and inspect it is really packed Look at that big, monster, hefty transformer and the capacitors. Insane sizes. We even got a lot more here at the bottom. Look how packed. That is something beautiful old germanium transistors. Here on the top, yeah, I think we can take away, maybe we are oh, just unscrew this and then we can maybe flip the board, something like that. It looks a little bit, no, okay, this is just, the varnish is sort of cracked. Really weird. But here on the top board, all the dust and dirt just goes in through all the top holes. We got some fungus infection right there. Look at the resistors down there. Ooh, some... What is that? And the... Oy, 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 oy. Let's see if we can get some light. This is not looking so good. Maybe a paintbrush and some compressed air is going to make this a little bit better to look at. Oh, that is some dirty, dusty. So after a little bit more cleanup, yeah, I also made it nice and beautiful here at the front and at the top see now we can have a little better look at the circuit board and all the components it is very complex but that is because there is a pre-regulator and the linear output stage i should probably put in a little um block schematic from the manual so we can see um, just a basic overview of this one and I think what we can see here on this transistor here see 1974 so it is that old so let's try and power this up Oof, damn it. <laughs> Let's 
let's let's try to do that again. That pre-regulator is scary. Yeah, exactly what's happening here. You can hear the pre-regulator is aggressive, uh, dangerous. See, every time it charges the capacitors. And this is a like a pulse skipping mode regulator. And the voltmeter is nice and accurate. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Whew. Whew. That was... And the ampere. I want to try and load this and hear if it's even <laughs> more crazy. Are you... I mean, let's try and take this camera a little bit closer here so we can listen to this. Okay. And then I dial this. It is using 20 watts of idle. And I don't like this sound. Maybe when you put on the sides and all that, maybe it's not a problem. And I would actually expect quite a high efficiency due to this pre-regulator. So let's see if it works with a little bit of loading. So let's try and just crank up the current limit and just give it one amp of load. Are you ready? So one amp of load is 20 watts output. Okay. Let's turn this off again. So idle is 20 watts. And then power consumption is 55. Okay, let's try the amp meter. Oh, it reads definitely too much. Aha, so there's something with the amp. It's not that much too much, but it is definitely reading a little bit too much. Let's see if the current limiter is working. So it should be around here, right? Ooh. <laughs> okay, that potential meter needs to clean up. This is scary. There is another really, really scary thing with this power supply. And I want to investigate a little bit more in this. But let's just pretend we are now in volt meter mode. Everything is turned off. We just put everything here in the middle and I disconnect my load. So we're only looking at the voltmeter. I don't expect this voltmeter here, the digital one, to be fast or anything like that. So it should not manual like that. Now it can't change ranges or anything. But look at the voltmeter here. This is 0 to 40 volts and we have 20 volts. So that should be in the middle. When we turn this on, what is going to happen here? Did you see it over shoots? Okay, let's go back to 20. Let's see what happens. Let's just wait until it's all the way down. Oh, now we want to use it again. No. What happened just before <laughs> was that the meter hammered all the way out and then went back to 20. So I want to know, it's not really that bad right now. I want to put on a scope and let's have a look. I think it's more or less only me. Uh, and maybe also the movement of the needle and its, its weight maybe that's overshooting. Because look at the scope. This is a turned on curve at full 
current limit and that is why it's this fast. So let's uh, dial down the current limit to half here in the middle. And let's try and turn it on again and see if it's slower. Yeah, exactly. So that is a nice slow. Let's just take it all the way down like that and then see if it's even. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it is. It's probably the most controlled power on sequence without any kind of overshoots I have seen in a very, very long time. Look at that. This is a, actually a little bit out of the ordinary to see something that controlled. Wow. Nice, nice. But the sound is <laughs> oh, oh, it's scary. Let's try and uh, do some load dump tests. So we got 200 millivolts per division and that is a one amp load dump and then it only overshoots. I mean what is that? A little bit over 100 millivolts and here is when the load is applied then the voltage just drops like this and then it goes back up and in is in regulation. Isn't it just beautiful? I totally love it, really? Can we maybe show some ripple as well? And ripple and noise? I mean there's there's nothing here. And we are now in microvolts. We should of course go to millivolts, uh, milliseconds like that, then we should be able to see. Well, we see a little bit of noisy pulses there. Really? Oh, here we go. That is the little ring from the pre-regulator. I mean, this is Five millivolts. Uh, this is nothing at all. What have we got? Yeah, we got 20 milli megahertz uh, bandwidth. I want to uh, show a little bit about the design in this uh, power supply. So here is a block diagram of the main components. And the most important thing, I think, is the pre-regulator. The pre-regulator is uh, mounted before the normal series regulator. And everybody knows how a normal series regulator uh, work in a DC power supply. So we're not going to talk so much about that. If we look at the schematic, a little bit more detailed part of uh, the schematic for the pre-regulator, we can see it is in the return path to the transformer. So this is a, an AC path. And we can also see the big hefty C13 capacitor is mounted after the pre-regulator. So now we know the pre-regulator turns on and off the charge to that capacitor, depending on how much voltage there is over the serious regulator. So that means when you crank up uh, the voltage to the output, then the pre-regulator will charge that capacitor. And if you turn it down, you will uh, see that it's, it's connecting the, the charge and then you wait a little bit and then it will start putting in energy to the capacitor. I've already shown that uh, quite clearly in my test of the a power supply, we can really hear what is going on because the pre-regulator turns on and off um, the current with some really sharp uh, ringing uh, edges and uh, the transformer really loves to <laughs> sing along uh, mechanically. Here is a little uh, more detailed uh, schematic where we zoom in uh, on the series regulator and the pre-regulator. We can see the two different transistors that is uh, handling um, 
The first one is the driver uh, that is called Q13 and then Q12 is the pre-regulator on off a sort of gating signal. Uh, if you will look a little bit uh, on top of Q12 we can see there is a resistor called R56. What worries me a little bit is this one is uh, connected to 48 volts. That is uh, quite a lot of reverse voltage uh, on a base emitter and uh, the 48 volts is actually uh, relative to the uh, emitter of this uh, transistor. If we zoom in on the real schematic, so here is the full schematic of the entire power supply. I have uh, made the tracks a little bit thicker. The negative track is uh, black and the positive uh, track is red. So this way it's easier to see uh, the, the path, the main path around what is going on. And here we can see the 48 volt uh, for that uh, transistor in the pre-regulator uh, is relative to the emitter and yeah I, th I think that is a little bit um, maybe uh, is that really necessary with 48 volts there so but that is more or less what I wanted to show about the schematic. So all in all I really uh, like this power supply it's nice accurate fantastic stable just this audio noise that is a little bit crazy. <laughs> that is definitely something. So uh, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Please come again soon. Bye bye.